We all live in a digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust and to be trusted. We all despise control and desire freedom. We, we are all united. Thank you, Nastia. It's a pleasure to be at the IGF again, even if, if online. And this zero day of the IGF is always interesting with the capacity building sessions, but I, I can't remember we actually had many of the games and exercises in the past, uh, so this is this is a nice opportunity. Uh, Diplo Foundation is an international educational NGO. Uh, our focus is obviously on, on cyber, cyber issues, digital issues and diplomacy, digital policy and international relations. And in this context of the game, what we try to, to help with the game is setting the stage a little bit, uh, the context of the game, and then the debrief after the game. Now, this edition is a little bit shorter than we usually do. And uh, Anastasia can, can elaborate when we do the whole exercise. It's usually an hour and a half, two hours, a lot of discussion. But we'll try to give a snapshot. Uh, and I won't take much time. I want to provide a, a quick context for those of you that are not, maybe not from the field. I'll just briefly add my background. I guess it's easier than to share the screen, actually. You can put me on uh, on, on the, or rather this side. Uh, you can see the background behind me. Uh, and it's actually the illustration of uh, how warfare might be led in, in future, even today. So you, uh, as an attacker, you have a person who is not, who is this, basically dressed as a civilian. Uh, he or she doesn't necessarily have to be, uh, you can probably put the speaker view if you want to see closer. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a military official who is launching an attack. And we see more and more proxies which are acting on behalf of states uh, conducting attacks. The attacks are conducted through the computer in a way, or uh, in the digital space, uh, attacking targets which can be ranged everything from hospitals to education, to energy sector, to shipment and, and harbors and so on. And we've seen many, many cases in the past of who are the targets. So the critical infrastructure basically can get attacked and, and uh, in a way made dysfunctional or even cause a lot of damage. Luckily, we haven't seen officially their lives yet, but it's, I'm afraid it's a matter of matter of time. Uh, and uh, uh, then what you can't see on this illustration, I can share the link later on, is there is a, a book on international law which underpins the table. Uh, so there are a lot of questions of international law and how international law applies to these cases. And in most cases, what we see is that attacks which are ongoing in cyberspace, what we call go under the threshold of armed attack, because we don't know what the armed attack is. We have a lot of... Uh, uh, discussions on that, a lot of suggestions how to articulate that in cyberspace, but we don't have an international agreement on that. And in, with all these circumstances and context, a huge question is attribution. So if you get an attack from somewhere and you have a huge loss and a high effect attack, a very sophisticated one, you can do a lot of forensics, uh, technical analysis, and try to find where is that keyboard that actually provided the attack. And you can do as much to that extent. But then you have to, as I've heard from some colleagues in, in the field, you have to bridge this couple of centimeters from the keyboard to the person who was behind. And then try to connect that person with proxies and entities around, and then these proxies with, the, with maybe governments and states. It's a very hard job to do. And the attribution, if you look, into closer details, it has these technical details, so technical attribution, as a legal attribution, you have to collect all the evidence they can actually put in the court that are valid, and I don't even want to mention how complex that is in different jurisdictions. And last, you have a political attribution, which is, in a way, a sovereign decision of states. It doesn't have to follow the previous ones, but we are trying to explain how complex this is. Now, what we are going to do in the next uh, hour and something is focus particularly on these aspects of technical attribution, understanding how can we and can we actually track what happened, understand how the attack unveiled, who might be behind it and for what reasons, and suggest some options based on this. What would you do in such a case if you would be in the shoes of decision maker? Would you point a finger 
uh, or would you do it differently to do a sort of attribution or signal who is behind? So touch upon political level, but just as a matter of exercise. If we have time, and I hope we will have time afterwards, we can debrief and look at the, the traps of these, uh, this complexity of attributions and where we should be uh, more cautious. Um, Nastya, back to you, and I hope we'll have time at the end. Thank you so much, Vlada. Um, again, and as usual, really masterful setting the scene and introduction, and it's really, I, I hope, helpful introduction to, to the broader context that we will be dealing with throughout the games. Uh, we know that would be a really diverse set of um, experts and people joining the IJ of this year. And also, I know that some people might be joining physically in Poland while we're conducting the game uh, fully virtual. So for playing the game, you would need also have computers or, or a laptop at, at least. The game cannot be launched through a mobile phone or a tablet. But before moving on the, with the games and before I actually explain the rules of the game, I also send a link in the chat with uh, a glossary, uh, which contains, uh, contains technical notions, which were specifically designed to assist you with the, any uh, sort of clarification of the any technical notion you might um, face throughout the game. So you could then load it um, in the meantime. And we proceed with the cyber stability games. I hope you could see my slides again. So the goal of the simulation would be to ensure cyber stability through avoiding conflict and by enhancing cooperation and exchange. Um, we have sort of KIPS, Kaspersky Interactive Protection Simulation, uh, for different scenarios. We usually design the environment of the airport or the power station to help actually the participants to learn how to protect those environments and many critical assets in there. For today's scenario, which focuses on technical attribution and complexities of this, we um, offer you a new fictional world. You can see the map on the screen right now. Um, it, of course, contains several countries. You don't need to choose any country, but please, um, um, but please uh, pay special attention to the three countries. Those are Republia, Fook Island, and Volcania. So each of you will represent as a diplomat of a national delegation at the UN First Committee, which exists actually in a real life. It deals with the, the peace of issues of international security and peace. Your responsibility um, would be to prevent security incidents, playing as a cyber diplomat, and to ensure international security through conducting technical attribution to identify, to identify who has been attacking uh, the UN and namely your delegation. Not to leave you completely um, desperate security situation and assist you throughout the game, we also designed the five profiles of possible threat actors that will be available in the console, which we will access all together a little bit later. So you see that the five uh, threat actors, three of them apathy threat actors, black octopus, Red snake, white horse. You will be able to see what they're interested in, what different language they use, uh, what targets they prefer. And also, we included two actors, uh, Bob Hacktivist and Hagen for Hack Company. But only one of them is the real culprit who uh, will be attacking the UN. A couple of words how to play before we will start actually playing. So you see right now the print screen of the actual console we will be joining soon. The console will contain all necessary information that you would need throughout all the uh, courses of the game. It will have the reports and the messages, the game resources, I'll explain this a little bit later, and actual timer because we will be having a limited number of time, limited time, sorry, for each phase. So if you'd like to open different panels for the console. For instance, if you'd like to open the message panel, you would need to click at the arrow share button. You could also switch between the game board and the action cards with the help of the slider. And you could also uh, zoom in and zoom out the console. About the rules. So um, remember that each of you who will be playing as a single player, uh, will be playing as a cyber diplomat, 
representing your national delegation of fictional reality to the UN. Structurally, we view uh, two levels, the UN level, first committee uh, level, and the national level. Um, so each of you, as a cyber diplomat, is being sent by the, uh, by the ministries of foreign affairs to the UN, and you use computers which are managed by the ministries. But it, they also are connected to the UN infrastructure. And right now you see on the slide the structural visualization of that. To zoom in a little bit to the national level, we also indicated here national cybersecurity agencies, certs, law enforcement as a important connect points for you to assist, uh, to, to actually ask for assistance and deal with the cyber incident. Beyond the national and the UN level, we also indicated here Whirlpool, which is an analog to Interpol in the real life. Uh, that is an international organization that has uh, with the World Pipe Police Cooperation and Crime Control. And they could be specifically helpful to you to investigate cyber incidents through um, across different borders and across different jurisdictions. We also put here private cybersecurity experts of different fields. If you might need any help with, uh, let's say, digital forensic, malware analysis, penetration testing, um, or incident response. And finally, at the UN level, we're also indicating here two instruments, two tools. One of them is the UN PR service team, which might be really helpful to you as a cyber diplomat, dealing with questions that will come from journalists. And also the third committee meetings, more explanation is given in glossary, uh, the link I put in the chat. So, but I also explain here a little bit. We discussed this um, quite extensively with uh, Vlada and with Diplo Foundation. And the idea is we're somewhere in the 2025, where hopefully the current open-ended working group, which uh, will start its work um, the next week, will end in a regular institutional dialogue at the UN level. So this sort of the, the UN institutional cyber dialogue working group, uh, which you already could uh, leverage to set up the coordination platform and thus to cooperate with other states, to exchange information with them, threat intelligence, or actually to respond to their requests for assistance or also ask for assistance um, uh, their delegations. So first committee meetings, those are ad hoc operational meetings, which you as a cyber diplomat may ask to convene if you need uh, to have a coordination channel with other states. To sum up, throughout the game, you would have four types of assistance. So you could ask um, national or UNIT support with a cyber incident. You could also ask National Cybersecurity Agency, CERT, to help you with the investigation of a cyber incident. Whirlpool and the private sector partners can also be helpful to you. And finally, you could also cooperate with other states. As I, as I mentioned, by sharing intelligence with them, or by sharing, for instance, your work national IT infrastructure, uh, if this doesn't work, or ask the local law enforcement assistance with investigation of um, cyber incident. Keeping in mind that the goal of today's games is international stability and peace, you would need to go through some steps. Uh, namely, you would need to investigate to understand what's happening to you with what you are dealing with, to try to remediate this, to conduct a technical attribution, and finally, to also conduct a proper communication with your important external and internal stakeholders to avoid the escalation panic. But please, Remember that you will be short of resources um, as in a real life, and you would need to prioritize. Please keep in mind that the focus should stay on technical attribution, which is the goal of today's game. The more information you have for evidence-based technical attribution, the safer cyberspaces. Um, and a couple of words about the structure, how actually the game would work. Throughout the game, we would have five turns. Each of the turns is similar uh, with each other. So basically, the turn structure is the same for all five turns. So each turn will start with the messages. You will get some news, world news, um, newspapers, 
internal messages, emails, um, lots of the information that you would need to deal with. Then there will be action phase, limited in time, when you would need to respond to those messages, basically to choose action cards. The system will then generate the score and will provide you with the reports, sharing with what has happened in your fictional reality, in your world, since you took the actions. This was happen throughout all five turns. Um, if you might have already questions at this moment, uh, please uh, do not worry. We will have a specific allocated time slot to discuss those questions. In the meantime, please write them down uh, and um, or you could also ask them in chat and uh, I would be happy to assist with the photo information about the game. About the game resources, um, as I mentioned, you will be short of the resources. In our game, we have two resources, abstract time and budget. Abstract time is, um, if you ask me, what's the abstract time? So basically, we wanted to give um, theoretically a suggestion of how much theoretically time it could cost each of the action throughout the game. Each of you will receive 100 abstract time for each turn. So it means that for all five turns in total, you will, be you will have 500 abstract time units. However, the time that you didn't use for one turn cannot be transferred to the next turn. And about the budget, for all five turns, you will get $75,000. Um, we know that is not much, um, just in, uh, in a real world, I guess. But also please keep in mind that your goal is not to make budget savings. So if you manage even to save some money, it will not make your score higher. The budget is not the end goal for you. This is something to assist you with the more options to deal with the cyber incidents. So you could take the action uh, and respond to the lots of the messages that you will receive, as many action cards as you want, but with the three conditions. First, you cannot actually exceed uh, the sum of the action cards um, more than 100 abstract time units. The sum of the action cards cannot exceed your budget. And also we will be having limited real time for each phase and you would need to make the actions before the time runs out. So the success of each of you as a single player will be measured uh, by the score, which evaluates how successful your uh, delegation in our fictional world in dealing with the complex cyber attack scenarios through investigation, remediation, communication, and technical attribution. The final part of the onboarding, I will explain you about the action cards. Right now, you see on the slide the illustration of um, two random action cards. Each of them will have a number, name, and effect. Number doesn't matter anything, so please, you could just ignore it. It's uh, just for our um, easier navigation throughout the game. However, name and effect is really something really important for you to consider. So you need to read the name each time in a, in a description each time because the effect of the card could be different depending on the turn and depending on the combination of different cards you play. Cost and time is also as a two game resources indicated in each card. So for instance, you see the game, the card number two, which means uh, convening the UN Cyber Emergency Working Group meeting. This is the same um, working group meeting that I um, explained a little bit earlier. It definitely will not cost you anything as a cyber diplomat. But speaking theoretically, in terms of the abstract time units in our game, it will cost you somewhere 50 abstract time units. And at some time, investigating DDoS attack, meaning that you request your National Cyber Agency assistance with the DDoS investigation. And it means that your National Cyber Security Agency will probably purchase a special anti-DDoS equipment and will spend some time to install it properly. It will also cost you somewhere 50 abstract time units. And in terms of money, it will cost you somewhere $15,000. So this is the end of our simulation. Please remember that the goal um, for you as a cyber diplomat is to ensure international security and peace. And you would need to investigate a cyber incident or incidents, and depends on how many um, you will face throughout all five turns. Uh, 
You will also need to collect all necessary pieces of evidence to understand who is the right culprit, communicate it timely to avoid the panic and escalation, and remedy the attacks if you, fa you face if you still have the time. Accurate technical analysis and the actual culprit being found as the ultimate target of today's game. Um, this is the time for the questions. Please let me know if you have any questions so far. Uh, you could ask them in the chat or raise a hand. If not, I will also like to show you the demo session, how basically the console would work. So maybe you could have more questions in the meantime. I will be sharing my screen again. You, will, you don't need to do anything. So let me share this. I hope you could see this. Once I will send you a link, self-registration link to access uh, the game, I, will, I really recommend to launch it from incognito mode. As you see, uh, I did it from incognito mode. I open also the Google Chrome browser. So it also would be really helpful if you copy and paste the link here, and you will see that the game hasn't started yet, which is absolutely okay because we haven't started playing. I also see the question from Sean. Um, you will be working individually as a single player. I hope this, uh, hope this um, helps. So once I will uh, launch the game, you will basically see this window. Welcome to play Team A. Team A is a standard name. So you could choose any name, uh, nickname you want. Um, and I choose mine. Um, let it be anonymous. So I choose my nickname and I push the button go. And once uh, I access the game, I could actually check the game board, zoom in, zoom out, and also check the cards of the threat actors. So here you could access them at any moment of the game you like. Just need to click it and click it again to close the cards. Here the slider, which you could use and see the action cards for the turn number one, they haven't been activated because we haven't started playing yet. So this is absolutely fine. You also see the game resources, as I, meant, as I promised, you will have 75K dollars for all five turns and 100 abstract time units for the first turn. Then here, if you click here, you will see the news. We don't have anything yet, it's okay. But then you will also have here the ranking of your individual score. So let's start playing as a demo session to understand how the action cards actually work. I will give you for the first um, turn, five minutes, you will get the first message here. So once you finish reading your message here, for the first turn, you will have just one message, but more and more turns happen, more messages you will have. Now you see that your time is ticking right now. You have five minutes for the turn number one, and you need to decide which action cards to choose. So I will choose this like randomly the first and the second card. And you see that the sum of my cards is now 100 absolute time units and all the action cards are now deactivated. If I'm okay with my decision, I push the button submit and I still have the time. And if I am not okay with my decision and would like to change it, I push the button cancel. Let's delete the smoke card and choose another one. And again, I push the button submit. Once uh, everybody has chosen the cards, I will send you the results. You will have two minutes. And let's see the ranking. So I got 165 points after the turn number one. And you will see here the individual ranking, um, how much everybody of you uh, will receive after the, each turn. And here in the news, as I promised, you got the message. It shows you which action cards you selected. And now you have the reporting phase. You would need to read carefully the reports. Basically, this I got the two messages, depending, of course, on the particular action cards played. 
and helps you with some tips to understand how better to proceed with the photo turns and thus to win in these games and identify who is being attacked in the UN. I hope this is clear for now. Um, as I also mentioned, you could switch between the game board and the action cards. So you could do this at any moment of your game. Let me know if you have any questions so far. Everything is clear, I guess. Um, I will be sending you the actual link in the chat. Just send it. So kindly ask you to copy and paste this link and also to use the incognito mode if possible. Please do not use mobile phone or um, iPad or any tablet because it, it wouldn't work on the laptops and computers would be really good to use uh, for better user experience. I will launch the game right now. So everybody will have the opportunity to choose the nickname. And let me know if anybody has any issues with the game. You could um, share this in the chat or unmute yourself and let me know. Uh, don't worry, we will wait everyone to join before starting playing. Absolutely. I will send the link one again, once again. So hopefully you could see this. Um, also, it's better to copy and paste the link in incognito mode or in your browser. Refresh the page if it doesn't work. I see the message, Fabio. Um, let me send you an individual link, just a second. I will be sending individually the link. So I just sent to Fabio. Fabio, please let me know if this works. And I also see the messages from Green and Monica and we'll send them as well. I send links to Corinne Monica and we'll wait for your feedback if this now works. In the meantime, I see that people have uh, joined the game and really uh, chose interesting nicknames. Super, thank you so much, Fabio. Got your message. Uh, and also we'll wait to hear from Monica to make sure that everybody is in the game. Super, thank you so much.
So this is the last call. Um, all the rest, please, um, apologies for this inconvenience. You could uh, use this time to grab a coffee or tea. Um, I just want to make sure that everybody joined. So please let me know if anybody still has any issues. Okay, I got the message. Uh, we'll send a link in a second. Last call to everybody. Yeah, they're still hidden. We will try to plan and we'll see um, if they will appear. It's, it's all good. Super, and I got just the message from the one more participant that did have some issues, and I assume that we could straight. Um, I will be sharing my screen again. Good luck to everyone. And we start with the turn number one. So remember that you are a cyber diplomat, and at the turn number one, you got a message. It's read and loaded at, from the national IT uh, with a message uh, about the cyber incident at the UN. They're telling you that they spotted a network of flood attacks, DDoS, which are targeted at the services you rely on. They either managed by your national or by the UN IT service team, and some services remain unresponsive. Internal and public mail and digital conference communications which you use are affected. This can create panic, undermine your reputation, and internally hinders your work. So this is the message for the try number one. Please proceed to your console. Uh, everybody will have right now five minutes for the turn number one, and your time has just started. Good luck to everyone. Your task to, uh, to identify which action cards you would like to choose to respond to the message number one. If you have any questions in the meantime, please do not hesitate to ask in the chat or mute yourself. I'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much, Kendrick, for the question. Um, no, you could actually choose as many cards as you want, but with the three conditions. The sum of the cards cannot exceed 100 abstract time units. You also cannot exceed your budget and you need to follow the actual time. So we've got five minutes for the first turn, um, and you need to manage to make the decision before the time runs out. I hope this helps.
One minute and almost 40 seconds left. I see that some of you already are ready with a decision. Um, this is great, but still you have the time to decide before the time runs out. Please also do not forget to, to use the glossary. It might help you with some explanation of technical notions you, you will face. Thirty seconds left. Three, two, one. And I'm stopping the action. So let's see the results. I'm sending you two minutes to read the reports. In the meantime, let's see the ranking. Congratulations to someone nicknamed Silence with leading up the tour number one with a total score 230. And all the rest, um, really good result. So until we still have the time, one minute and 40 seconds. So please read the reports now carefully because they may have some tips for you to proceed further. Thirty seconds left. Time runs out, I'm stopping the reporting phase and let's proceed to the turn number two. So again, we'll start with checking the public messages if we, if we have any. Let's see, I'm sharing my screen. Yes, we do. Uh, the, this time the public message comes from the UNIT. It's red alerted. Uh, they also spotted DDoS, which targeted the UN service. Uh, and they also share with you that it's ongoing and intensifying. All communication exchanges have been severely affected. The UNPR service reports the journalists are asking even more questions, but they still don't have any additional information to provide. However, they are working hard to develop the incident response and ask for more time. And at some time, you also got the message from Whirlpool. Um, it's analog to Interpol, uh, read a lot of it. They identified a message mentioning the ongoing cyber attacks against the UN on a specialized dark web forum, which they assess to be credible. The message includes 
the UN seems to be under DDoS attack, their security is bad, I hack them. It's all public messages for the tutorial number two. You may have some individual messages in your console, so please do not forget to check them as well. And I'm sending you four minutes for the tutorial number two, and good luck to you, everyone. Your time has just started. One minute left. I see that most of you already decided um, about the action cards, but still you need the time. You still have the time, so please hurry up. Ten seconds left. Five, three, one, and I'm stopping the action phase. I hope you managed to choose the action cards. For now, let's again to check the results and see the reports. I'm sending you two minutes, and we see again silence is leading up the turn number two. Congratulations, and also congrats to all the rest. Uh, I see that really good results. By the way, do not get set too, too fast if you're not really happy with your result. We still have three more turns and the situation usually as it happened uh, may actually change significantly. 
So for now, please read the reports um, and then we will proceed with the turn number three. Five seconds left. Two, one, and I'm stopping the recording phase. So let's proceed with the turn number three and let's check first if we have any public news. Uh, yes, we do. Um, again, it comes from the UNIT and they shared it with you that DDoS attack is ongoing and affecting now all IT services at the UN. So it's no longer only your delegation um, dealing with the D D DDoS. Entire um, services of the in the UN have been affected as well. And now the risk is that some critical digital information is not reachable uh, is not reachable anymore uh, because support and services and network devices are becoming flooded by the DDoS network communications as well. And at some time, you also got the report from the UN press service colleagues, and they share with you that the newspapers which feature multiple articles um, and cite unnamed sources in Republia. Republia is one of the countries in our fictional reality. Um, they declare that White Horse, a Napiti group that allegedly has origins from Volcania, is conducting offensive cyber operations against the UN. Journalists report that relations between Republia and the suspected country of origin of White Horse are becoming strained, but of course, Republia might have its own agenda here. Um, I can't say you if this information is really helpful or something to distract you. So, um, but we proceed with the turn number three, and you have four minutes. Good luck to everyone. Please uh, choose the action cards to respond to these messages. Almost two minutes left, so please hurry up.
30 seconds left. Five, three, two, one, and I'm stopping the action right now. So let's proceed to the results and I'm sending you two minutes. Um, okay, congratulations to Silence. Again, leading up the tutorial number three, it's really impressive, congrats, with a total score of 520. We also see uh, a new number two, Kali uh, with a total score of 495. All the rest, congrats. Um, you still have the time to read the reports. And then we will proceed to the turn number four. Thirty seconds left. Two, one, and I'm stopping the recording phase. So let's proceed to turn number four and let's check again the public news, which will be common for all. Um, yes, we do have the message from the UNIT. It's read and loaded, but the share with you that DDoS attack suddenly stops. No one really understands why. The communication exchanges within the UN are working as they should. So everybody, everything is now perfect again. Um, at the same time, the investigation by the UN member state has revealed that the service that we use for the DDoS attack were located in Fook Island. I don't know if, again, if it's helpful information or not or something to distract you, but you again have four minutes and your time has just started. Good luck to everyone. Please do not forget to check your individual messages. Uh, in the console because they may also have some really useful tips for you to proceed further. By the way, let us know, please, 
if two minutes for reading the reports enough or not really would be really helpful for your feedback. Your final one minute. So please hurry up. I see that some of you have not decided yet. Five seconds, three, two, one, and I'm stopping the action phase. So sending you two minutes. And again, let's check the score. Oh, congratulations. As I, as I promised, it is now significantly changed. We now have Kali um, leading up the Detroit number four with a total score 645. Uh, Elsa, silence, congrats to you and all the rest. So before moving to the final turn in this game, please read the reports. And then we will proceed in one minute, 30 seconds. Your last five seconds. Three, two, one, and I'm stopping the reporting phase. So let's proceed to the final turn. And let's check first if we have any public news. No public news at the turn number five, but you may have some individual messages. Do not forget, please, to check them as well. 
and I'm launching final four minutes and good luck to everyone. Final one minute. Ten seconds left. Two, one, and I'm stopping the action, please. So let's see the final score, and I'm sending you two minutes. Okay, congratulations to Kali um, for total score 895. Eza, Silence, Kendrick, Team M, and all the rest. Really, really good job, um, but this is not the end. We have bonuses, and the bonuses might change the situation. So while you're still reading your final reports, I'd like to explain you what the bonuses are and for which cases we design the bonuses. So I'm sharing my screen again. So the bonus part, we specifically thought, uh, keeping in mind that this is a capacity building virtual exercise and also security focused game training, we also thought to give bonuses for 
really good security decisions that you may take throughout the five turns. Right now, you see the examples of such cases. I'm not going to read all of them, of course, but just um, we'll probably share with you some of them. So for instance, if you decided to investigate the DOS uh, by examining all available clues, by checking all the and picking all the action cards for that, you will get 20 points. If you, for instance, remediated the perpetual blue-based malware incident, at the very beginning, you will also get 20 points. What's really important for us as um, those who try to design this game, if you will get the bold highlighted message slash bonus. So if you decided to follow all possible steps to conduct the technical attribution, an investigation, including sharing the results afterwards with the other states, you will also will get 20 points, but it's really important for us to know if you get this bold highlighted message. So please let us know in the chat. It would be really, really interesting to know. For some cases, we also design anti-bonuses to thus highlight which decisions will not be considered really secure, um, security-wise good decisions. So for instance, if you decided to subscribe to a standard internet access provider to create free um, and quick mail accounts, but they will not be secure, especially for you as a cyber diplomat and for your confidential digital uh, data. Um, yes, it will help you to get rid of DDoS quite, quite quickly and forget about this for the time being. But again, uh, working in a government and working in the UN, it will not be a really security-wise decision. Then if you also decided to pay ransom, if you um, actually faced ransomware, please do not pay ransom because paying ransom doesn't guarantee that you will have your data decrypted. But if you did, you will be deducted minus 20 points. And finally, if you decided to blame publicly several apt threat actors without any evidence, meaning that you didn't play any action cards before, that will help you to launch uh, any technical investigation and get any clues or pieces of evidence, but you just randomly decided to blame all uh, APT actors at one turn, it will also be deducted minus 20 points because we thought that it will be a step that would most likely lead to further escalation and confusion among other um, among international community. I'm now sending you the bonuses and let's again check the final, final uh, score. So, so well, the situation hasn't changed significantly. Congratulations to Kali for winning the game. Um, I really hope that you're satisfied with your um, results. If you wish to um, to reveal yourself, please uh, feel free to do so in the chat. If you if you do not, no pressure, of course. Um, by the way, I also forgot to mention that the nicknames that you use will be automatically generated in the certificates, which I will send in a moment. But also, if you wish to have certificates with your real name, we'll also be able to do so. For now, we'd like to proceed with the part when actually the entire scenario will be unveiled. And I'd like to share with you what specifically has happened with you during the five uh, turns. And again, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to write them down. Uh, we will be happy to also during the debrief session, which Vlada would lead to respond to your questions or any feedback you might have. So now is the part when we'll actually like to share with you what has happened, what was specifically you were dealing with. Uh, and before that, just a quick reminder that your goal was to ensure international stability and peace. You had to go to, through several steps. Of course, keeping in mind the technical attribution is the key priority within this game for you. Actually, throughout um, the whole game, you were dealing with the four cyber incidents with the DDoS, Hacktivist, APT, and Ransomware. The DDoS attack was the obvious one. Everybody knew about this from the very beginning, but um, the attack ended as surprisingly as it started. This is definitely was hindering your work. Um, it was causing some chaos, but it was not really a big deal. No intrusion was involved and you could find ways to keep working despite the DDoS. In any case, criminals are rarely fools. So they work with a purpose and this attack could have been actually a smoke screen for the real attack. The hacktivist, the attack was conducted a long time ago 
by a lone hacker who exploited a very old vulnerability but left a backdoor and a tendon that could still be leveraged by malicious actors. You could learn about this attack by investigating the affected mail service by the DDoS from the very beginning. The ABT, Advanced Persistent Threat, this the most serious attack, an important attack for you to consider because it's sophisticated and offers the targets the ability to spy on confidential, co confidential data that your delegation and broadly other delegations within the UN have. You could find out about this conducting and security uh, audit from the very beginning actually would help you to understand where the intrusion took place and what's actually you've been dealing with. And finally, ransomware. This is the full attack that you, your delegation have been dealing for at all five turns. This is an absolutely independent attack. Unfortunately, this might happen with everyone. Um, and it has been made possible in now again out of the negligence when some users open phishing emails. Secretly, some secret reveals uh, all the action cards have been split into two groups, effective actions and you'd better done actions. We also could call them simplistically bad and a good card because those cards that were effective actions, they were designed to help you with the investigation, the mediation, and finally collecting pieces of the evidence for technical attribution. You'd better done cards, those cards were also specifically designed to dis to bother you, to make your situation worse, to distract you, um, and thus lead the situation to uh, less stability in cyberspace. To give you an idea how this concept of the good and the bad cards work, so this is just an illustration at the turn number one. You see that at this turn, cards two, four, and five were considered as effective actions because if you, for instance, um, request forensic investigations are affected by the DDoS mail service, it will help you understand why actually DDoS were possible, where the vulnerability um, existed and from where, from which IP addresses the DDoS might come. The requesting assistance from the private sector with the security audit, um, short and the ad hoc one, could, would be also quite a good decision because at the very beginning, you will probably get a bigger picture technical picture, where the intrusion took place, if there was any data has been leaked, if there is any data breach uh, happened, and broadly to help you understand what you've been dealing with. The card number three, preparing PR statement at the turn number one, um, we thought that it would not be really a good decision because at the very first moments you don't have what you've been dealing with, you just got a message from the your national IT that there is a DDoS. You don't have any further information. You still don't have any fact checking if other delegations in the UN have been dealing with the DDoS as well. So going public with uh, answering questions from journalists will probably will not satisfy them and provide more escalation of the situation. Another illustration that the some combination of the cards also could be considered as not really effective solution. So for instance, cards 24 and 25, if played together at one turn, will not be a really good decision. Uh, why? Well, because you cannot ask to uh, investigate ransomware if you ask also to clean up at the same time. But playing those cards at a different turns would be actually a good decision that help you with the ransomware investigation further. How could you learn about the IPT attack? Well, basically, this is the path, sort of the step-by-step. -step. How could you learn about the attack that you've been dealing actually with a really sophisticated attack? At the turn number one, as I mentioned, it's really good if you decided to conduct a security audit and understand why there has been the DDoS happen if any deep intrusion took place. What part of the computers and servers have been affected, those that are managed by your nationality or those by managed by the UN IT service team. At the turn number two, you have this knowledge. You also go with the analysis of a malware because you know that there's been vulnerability exploited by the malware. You purchase threat intelligence report on this uh, perpetual based malware to learn who have been affecting and using this malware in the past, which particular threat actors. You share these results with the other delegations as a sort of due diligence and probably to get some threat intelligence in response to advance your investigations 
investigation in this regard. At the trend number three, you'll learn that this might be coincidence that some threat actors in the past have been exploited the same vulnerability. So you wanted to double check if this coincidence or not. You could go to the expert and ask them. He will tell you that it's not a coincidence for sure. And then by trend number four, you learn that this was a white horse APT threat uh, actor. You could decide to go with the public attribution as a because it's your sovereign right as the delegation. The trend number four is the absolutely optional card because I mentioned that the goal of this game was technical attribution. So playing the card number 19 doesn't increase your score, doesn't lower your score. But it was among the possible options as well. Hacktivist attack, how could you learn about this? Uh, at the trend number one, if you decide to um, convene the UN cyber emergency meeting to understand if anyone in the UN have been also affected by the DDoS, you also ask the forensic investigation, you go with the deeper forensic investigation in turn number two to get the list of IP addresses. You know that those IP addresses are located in Volcania. You ask Volcania's assistance to identify malicious addresses if Volcania helps you at the turn number four. You also ask the local law enforcement to help with the cybercrime investigation. And you learn that as a just a pop hacktivist, Elon Herke, who indeed intruded into the UN system, left the back door, but didn't really create any damage further. We don't know why, maybe he just lost the interest. Again, 